will see the conductivity and charge carrier concentration in intrinsic semiconductor we know that semiconductors semiconductors are of two types that is one is pure or intrinsic semiconductor and what is this intrinsic semiconductor we have no impurity is added to change its property and the second type of semiconductor is extrinsic or undoped we had impurity is added to improve its property so we know that all semiconductors behave as insulator at 0 kelvin but as we increase the temperature above 0 kelvin some electron electrons get sufficient energy and jump to conduction band leaving behind a hole in valence band and in this way the conductivity of phase semiconductor will increase and from here we can notice that the number of the charge carrier depends upon the temperature so first let's make a calculation of this charge carrier that is carrier concentration in intrinsic semiconductor first we are taking intrinsic semiconductor then we will move on extrinsic semiconductor so we know that concentration concentration of holes very and very is hole in valence band and electrons in conduction band can be obtained from the knowledge of the density of state in the valence band
and conduction band. So to know the concentration of holes and electrons in a semiconductor, first we have to know the density of states or available states in valence band and conduction band. So first let me calculate the electron concentration. Electron concentration. In conduction band. So under Thermal equilibrium condition the number of electrons per unit energy. Per unit volume having energy D E about E And this is the range having energy and we can write it as having energy in a range d e about e is so as I said earlier, to know the carrier concentrant, concentration, we have to know the density of states. So here we can write number of electrons about energy E in the range D E, which is equal to D E, that is density of state in the Range D E and here we have to multiply by Fermi distribution function. We have D E is the density of state, density of states, and F E is the Fermi distribution function. by using this formula d d e we can get the num total number of available states in this range d e but by multiplying this fermi distribution function we can get actual number of electron present in this state so And as I calculated earlier, the value of this dE is equal to 4 pi h cube 2m raised to the power 3 by 2 and what is the value of this Fermi distribution function? We know that Fermi distribution function is 1 by 1 plus exponential 
E minus EF where EF is the formidable in the inductor. This going to D E. So here we have to put the value of this E and we can put this value by considering this concept. Let's say this is conduction band. This is valence band. And this, let's, this is EF the formidable. So let's say we are considering an electron at this level with energy E. Then this energy E, if EC is the energy of the minimum level in conduction band, then this energy E would be EC plus its kinetic energy. It's close square K square by 2M. So from here its energy, this energy would be S close square K square by 2M E minus EC. So we have to put this value here and also here. So we can write this above equation as N E D E which is equal to 4 pi H cube 2M 2M 3 by 2 E minus E C or half into 1 1 plus exponential E minus E minus E F by K T and D K. We have to also put this value here, but I am not putting at this time. <coughs> so <coughs> we can solve this equation by using some assumption that since E minus E C larger than K T, so we can put some assumption by putting E minus E C equal to X and then we solve this. So the finally the total number of electrons per unit volume in the Conduction band is so this this number is the number of electrons present in this range DE. But we want to know the number of electrons present in conduction band. So for this we have to integrate this equation that is N E D E and we have to integrate this energy from EC that is from the lower of the conduction band and to the infinity. So which is equal to D E F E or D. So by putting the value above this value here and by considering various assumption we can solve this equation and after solving this equation we can get n equal to 2 over 2 into 2 pi mn star kt 2 by h square into 3 by 2 exponential minus EC minus EF 
by k t. So this is the number of electrons present in conduction band. And please try to solve this equation. You can see solution of this equation in SOPLU and other books. You have to make some assumption for solving this equation and you have to also use gamma function to solve this equation. And if we put <coughs> this factor 2 into 2 pi mn star kt by h square into 3 by 2 equal to nc because we have to write many times this equation so simply we put instead of this to this number nc and here mn star is the effective mass of electron So finally we get a number that is n equal to nc exponential minus ec so ec minus ef by kt so this is the number of electrons at temperature t in an intrinsic semiconductor and for silicon this number nc is equal to 2.8 into 10 to the power 25 t by 300 t by 2 meter cube so we can see that this number nc varies with temperature. So now in a similar way we can get the value of holes in valence band that is the whole concentration in the valence band so similar to the above equation we can get here the number of p and we know that all holes can be represented by p that is NP exponential here we have to change this now <coughs> since EF is greater than EV so we can do this by KT here we have to consider this concept that let's say it's conduction band we don't need now this conduction band this time we only need this valence band so this is the formula and this is the maximum energy in valence band so from here if we take any value of all that is let's say it's at energy E then this energy E would be equal to EV minus H square E square by 2M for electron we make here plus sign and here EC but here since now EV is greater than this energy so we have to write this in this way by putting all this value then we can get this number 
and in above equation np equal to 2 into 2 pi mp star at by s square 3 by 2 where mn sorry mp star is the effective mass of moles so for silicon for silicon np is equal to 2.8 into 10 to the power 25 t by 300 3 by 2 per meter cube so here we calculated the value of electrons in conduction band and holes in valence band so now let's see where is the fermi level in intrinsic semiconductor that is fermi level in intrinsic semiconductor so in intrinsic semiconductor we know that number of electron is equal to the number of holes so from above equation we can write here nc exponential that is i am now going to put the value of n and p exponential minus ec minus ef by kt and np exponential minus ef minus ev by kt so from here we can write np by nc which is exponential 2ef minus ec minus ev by kt and by solving it further we can get 2ef minus ec minus ev by kt which is equal to log natural np nc by taking natural logarithm on both sides we got this equation and so from here we can write ef which is equal to ec plus ev by 2 plus kt by 2 log natural np by nc now by putting the value of this np and nc we can get ef which is equal to ec plus ev by 2 plus kt by 2 log natural 
टू इंटू टू पाई एम पी स्टार ए टी एच के थ्री बाई टू बाई एच के वी कैन राइट हेयर टू एच स्क्र टू आई एम एन स्टार एटी थ्री बाई टू सो वी कैन कैंसल मैन्यू ऑफ दिस एंड फाइनली वी गेट ई एफ विच इज इक्वल टू ई सी प्लस ई वी बाय टू प्लस ए टी बाय टू लोग नेचुरल एम पी स्टार एम एन स्टार इंटू टू दी पावर थ्री बाय टू सो दिस इज द वैल्यू ऑफ फॉर्मी एनर्जी एंड अगेन वी कैन सोल्व फॉर दिस बाय putting this here because it's a logarithm so ef equal to ec plus ev by 2 plus 3 by 4 at log natural mp star mn star so this is the value Where Fermi level is present in intrinsic semiconductor. At we can see from here at zero Kelvin temperature, that is at equal to zero, this term will be zero. So E F will be E C plus E V by two. so this is the fermi level at zero kelvin temperature and we can see here that is fermi level is between the valence band and conduction band so from here we can take some points or note some point that is first one Fermi level lies in the middle of the conduction band and the valence band. At zero Kelvin temperature, and the second point is this is also true for all temperature. provided that and p that is effective mass of proton uh, holes and effective mass of electron so not even at zero kelvin temperature the fermi level in intrinsic semiconductors lies lies in the middle of the valence band and conduction band at high temperature at every temperature but condition is that the effective mass of holes should be equal to effective mass of electrons but in general
effective mass of hole is greater than effective mass of electrons. So the Fermi level is raised slightly as T exceeds zero Kelvin and for silicon at three hundred Kelvin the Fermi level raised only 0 0.01 electron volt which may be neglected for practical purpose so practically we can use fermi level in between the conduction band and valence band at all temperature for intrinsic semiconductor. So now let's see what is law of mass action in intrinsic semiconductor. This is very important to solve the number of electrons and holes at various temperature. So we know that n equal to p or number of electrons is equal to number of holes in an intrinsic semiconductor. And we can consider it's equal to Ni. So we can write product of N and P equal to Ni square, which is equal to NP NC exponential EC minus EV by KT. I am putting the value of <coughs> n and p here and which is equal to n p n c exponential minus e z by k t and we know that what is e z let's say its conduction band its valence band and this difference is e z which is e c minus e v So, if we put value of NP and NC here, that is on putting the values of NP and NC, we can get NI square or NP which is equal to 4 2 pi m we can omit from here 2 pi kt by h square into 3 then mp star into mn star raised to the power 
3 by 2 exponential kz by kt. So now we get a number ni square over, over np that is this one. So from here we can write ni equal to np we can write in np or nc which is equal to exponential minus ez by kt. So this is the ni and in another way we can also write this one as and this is under the root since here this ni square. So in a simple manner we can write ni equal to under root np nc and we can write here under root in this way which is minus half kz by kt. So this is the n or p or ni in intrinsic semiconductor. So from here we can note that law of mass action tells that the product of electrons and holes is a constant at a given temperature. So Ni is the product of electron and holes. Then we can see from here that this number is constant. That depends on the key. T or at a particular temperature the number of the product of the electron and holes will remain constant and in a short way we can write that is NP which will be constant at given temperature. It's a very important point to note. And the second one, if impurity atoms are added to a semiconductor or intensity semiconductor to increase N. there will be corresponding decrease in P such that product remains constant. So in semiconductor, the product of N and P is always remains constant. If we increase the number of N, then number of P will automatically decrease. And on the other hand, if we increase the number of P, then the number of electrons will automatically decrease. So in this way, we can say that NP which is equal to Ni square will remain always same 
in a similar way. So now we know the number of electrons and number of holes in a semiconductor. So it's time to know the variation of conductivity with temperature. That is variation of conductivity with temperature in an intrinsic semiconductor. So we know that the total conductivity in a semiconductor is equal to the sum of the conductivity due to electron and conductivity due to holes. And we know that what is the conductivity due to electron which is equal to n e mu n and what is the conductivity of hole which is equal to p e mu p where mu n is the conductivity due to electrons mu p is the conductivity due to holes mu n is the mobility of electrons and mu p is the mobility of holes so we can write here that is total conductivity mu which is equal to e n mu n plus p mu p but in a in an intrinsic semiconductor we know that n equal to p and which is equal to n i so we can write here that is e n i which is equal to mu n plus mu p so in this equation that is total conductivity of semiconductor is equal to e n i mu n plus mu p so from this equation if we can see that if mobility does not depend on temperature then variation in conductivity by changing the temperature is only due to change in carrier concentration carrier concentration in i since in the above equation we can see this conductivity depends on this number n i and mu n and mu p if mu mobility is constant or doesn't depend on temperature then we can see that this conductivity only depends upon this number n i that is the number of charge carriers so as 
I calculated earlier. Here I am directly writing the value of Ni which is equal to 2 into 2 pi kt 3 by 2 h cube into mn star mp star 3 by 4 exponentially exponential minus ez by 2 kt where ez is the band gap as i said earlier So, by putting this value in earlier equation that is for conductivity, we can get conductivity which is equal to E mu n plus mu p into 2, 2 pi kt 3 by 2 h cube mn star p star into 3 by 2 exponential minus ez by 2 kt so i am taking logarithm on both sides we can get log natural which is equal to minus ez by 2 kt or we can write in a different way 1 by t plus 3 by 2 log natural t plus constant all these terms that is 2 pi h cube mn and mn, mn star mp star are constant so i am putting all these constant in a single term that is constant so From here we can see that this equation is an equation of straight line. So, plot of log natural conductivity and 1 by t gives a straight line. So, if we plot this that is 1 by t in this direction and log natural conductivity in this direction then we get a graph like this which is a straight line. So slope of this line gives an estimate of the band in above equation we can easily 
see that this is the equation of a straight line that is y is equal to m x plus c and m is the slope so here what is the slope slope is easy by 2k so if we get a slope of this equation then that the value of slope slope can give us the value of bend gap so in this plot we can see that as we increase the temperature that is its this scale is 1 by t so temperature will increase in this direction so as we increase the temperature conductivity of the semiconductor is also increasing so this is for intensing semiconductor and one thing here we can note that for any semiconductor in semiconductor the actual value of value of current is due to the following two consequences that is we use this concept in many times so the actual current in a semiconductor depends upon the following two reason that is first is due to drift current so this is the current due to or drift of charge carrier under the effect of applied electric field and the second one is due to diffusion current diffusion current and this is due to diffusion of carriers under the effect of concentration gradient of dopants present inside the semiconductor so in semiconductor the total current is always due to the drift current and diffusion current so in next next lecture we will see the carrier concentration and conductivity in extensive semiconductor